Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm going to talk today about the decomplexification. Sounds terrible, what does that mean? I'm Milena Cukic, electro engineer and neuroscientist. In physiology, there is a branch of research I like the most, which is called physiological complexity. And let me tell you something about the core problem of this research. When people start writing about medical problems, about physiology, some two centuries ago, of course, there are much older sources, but I'm, I'm talking about modern medicine. They were calling uh, disease disorder. This order means something which is differentially, uh, which is completely different, which is totally opposite of order. The, this is the consequence of a uh, central point in physiological theory that health goes together with kind of equilibrium, with orderly processes, with something that we call homeostasis. But since we learn more and more, we are beginning to realize that there is no such a thing as order in physiological processes and systems. For example, if you look at the cell, which is the, the basic uh, thing in physiology, there is something which is inside and outside of the cell, and the border is actually the membrane of the cell. And you can measure the differences in, in the concentration of your ions that are inside and outside. And this is how you can measure uh, voltage potential between the two. So this is basically the reason why cells are producing some electrical signal and that we can measure that and that we can conclude something about what is going on with, with the cells and, and the groups of cells, with tissue, organs, etc, etc. So, if it would be in equilibrium, that means that the difference would not exist. So the concentration, for example, for uh, potassium inside and outside would not be a certain number, it would be zero. The difference between calcium inside and outside of uh, the cell would be also zero, but that means also that. So living systems are obviously something quite more complicated than simple equilibrium. So to go further, uh, many people who started applying uh, nonlinear dynamics when I say nonlinear dynamics, this is actually a, a series of mathematical models uh, devised for statistical physics or before, which actually gave very good results in quantum physics. So when you go into physiology, you can see, for example, that there is no equilibrium. Every cell is somewhere close to the equilibrium, but not in equilibrium, because equilibrium equals that. Uh, so what is then order and what is that disorder? People who start uh, analyzing the dynamics of cells and tissues and, and their physical state actually discovered that this is quite the opposite of what classical medicine taught of it. For example, if you have a signal recorded for a healthy system, let's say healthy heart or healthy brain, it is nonlinear, it is non-stationary and it is not predictable. And that goes well with how doctors started to make diagnosis in their patients, because patients who have certain disease or disorder are having the same symptoms or similar symptoms. So they actually have characteristics which are quite different from healthy people who doesn't have that kind of problem. So this is something that we call stereotypy of disease. For example, if you have patients who have Parkinsonism, they all have certain kind of symptoms like tremor. Not all of them, but majority of them have tremor, unwilling movements. They have certain kind of uh, things that doctor, medical doctor is looking for to confirm the diagnosis that that person have that particular disease. So how we can quantify that? 
other than looking for the symptoms which are apparent. Uh, in, cl in classical medicine and in current clinical practice, they are still applied uh, standard frequencionistic statistical model when you compare the means of two groups and see whether they significantly differ. But much more appropriate way how you can do that is by applying nonlinear analysis to quantify those subtle dis differences between health and disease. To get back to the beginning of, of my talk is to uh, say that the dynamic of healthy system is quite different than the dynamic of certain illness. We all know that. But how you are going to, for example, see when something is coming, we call that early diagnosis, with nonlinear uh, analysis application. For example, if you measure some fractal dimension or some fractal measure like the threaded fluctuation analysis, or if you apply any of entropy measures, you can see quite a big difference between health and disease. Why it is so? Because when we age or when we become sick, those signals also change. And it is observed quite some time ago, that certain illnesses, and actually many illnesses, are showing predictability, meaning they are cyclic, they have some cyclical rhythm which is predictable, like in Parkinsonism, for example, in, in depression, because the episode is coming again and again during, uh, for example, one year or two years or, or something. and. Basically, when you pre can predict something, it means that that system is showing uh, oscillatory behavior. In healthy organism, you don't have that. Healthy organism doesn't show simple dynamic. It shows very uh, irregular dynamic, which can abruptly change. For example, when you have to climb uh, the mountain or you have to climb the stairs or you have to go and breathe in in area when there is a different level of oxygen that your organism is used to etc etc so uh, that dynamic is is completely different than in normal uh, uh, functioning but this is actually the cause this is the reason why a uh, healthy system is so unpredictable because behind that nonlinearity uh, non-stationarity and unpredictability is the possibility to adapt. If your heartbeat would be so predictable, you wouldn't be able to adapt to new uh, uh, conditions from your environment. So you would die if you would have a slightly stronger uh, physical effort. So uh, I would like to say that it is a, a discipline which is unfortunately still not uh, widely used in, in medicine, but I hope to see that more often in clinical research, in, in clinical application, not only in research. This is for today. Thank you.